Unity started more than a century ago as a publishing house, and it's still producing some of the finest books and spiritual products anywhere. Here's good news. This holiday season, everything in the Unity online store is 15% off. You'll find the latest books, journals, and card decks, along with an out-famous intention dice and a new pet puzzle. This year, send unique gifts to all your spiritual friends. Visit unity.org slash gift guide. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Welcome to Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Learn the language of spirit. This is The Intuitive Life with Laura Wooster. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Intuitive Life, where we walk together and support each other on the path to becoming more spiritually aware, enlightened, and inspired. My name is Laura Wooster, and we will be taking your calls today for readings, and it's 816-251-3555. Again, it's 816-251-3555. And uh, we'll be taking calls, obviously, for readings, but you can also call if you have questions. Um, It doesn't have to be a reading. If you have questions about astrology or um, psychic intuitive abilities, maybe there's something that you're dealing with that you'd like to learn a little bit more about. Um, It doesn't have to be a reading necessarily, so feel free to call in for that. Um, If you would like a reading today, uh, Dorothy Morgan is back today, so uh, we will need your birth information. So we'll take that off the air so we don't have that on the podcast here. So um, just be prepared with your birth date, your birth time, and your city of birth. And um, our lovely uh, engineer will take care of that for you when you call in. Um, but again, it's 816-251-3555. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who came to the evening of mediumship um, last Thursday with myself and John Holland at Circles of Wisdom in Massachusetts. Um, it was, I don't know if it was the moon, the full moon, uh, people just happy to be out, although masked, um, <laughs> they were just happy to be in a room with other people. But it was just a fun night, of great energy. And uh, we just had such a good time, and it was so good to make those connections for you guys. Um, So we're going to be doing it again. Uh, We haven't set a date just yet, but it'll be in a few months, and we'll be doing that again at Circles of Wisdom. And once we set a date, we will definitely have that on the calendar. But until then, I will be doing a an afternoon of mediumship and spirit art at the same place at Circles of Wisdom in January 22nd, which is not far away, hard to believe. and that's in the afternoon, so you don't have to be driving after dark. I know a lot of people don't want to, especially in the winter, they want to, people want, just want to be home. They don't want to be out and about in the evening. So um, if you prefer an afternoon event, uh, it's January 22nd. You can go to my website for more information on that, and that's laurelworcester.com. And also, um, you can also follow me on social media if you would like to be reminded of when the shows air and the topics and who's my guests and everything. And you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm intuitive. Laura on Instagram and also I'm intuitive Laura on TikTok and Facebook is connected on my on my page as well. So I always try to keep everybody up to date on what's happening. But without further ado, we have a great topic today and let me bring my guest on and you a lot of you who listen know who she is and she's one of my most popular guests, Dorothy Anona Morgan. Hello Dorothy. Hi. How's everybody? (laughs) No, nobody can answer. (laughs) <laughs> they're all waving in the air i can see it um so yes yeah, right. so, <laughs> so when we when we when i had you on the show last week we were talking about um you know the astrology the current astrology but then when we got off the air we started having a conversation it's sort of like um remember when oprah used to do that like she used to have like let the cameras roll after the show and we're like oh that'd be a great topic we should air that um that we mm-hmm. sort of did the same thing and so we're like wow that's a great topic we should cover this and that mm-hmm. that um, topic is um, making space or being okay with creating space for something more. And we'll yeah. explain what that is exactly in a moment. But um, so, but Dorothy, you're saying that it, that's been coming up in astrology recently. So mm. yeah, what, yeah. What oh showing? yeah, mm-hmm. it's showing up in um, a lot of people who are. Um, feeling um, overwhelmed and I know we all feel that in some capacity but I mean it's just it's across the board um, people feeling 
you know, the emotions of, of what's going on and, and things. It seems like things um, are setting, you know, triggering people, if you will, or, or setting them, getting them more emotional than what they're comfortable with or what they're used to or they're like judging their, um, the emotions that they're feeling. And, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot to it just because, um, you know, we need to create the space to, um, feel what we're feeling. And the reason a lot of people are, are feeling, uh, uh, well, there's many reasons, of course. I mean, but one of the most obvious, it's really pretty blatant, is that, you know, we've all been dealing with, a loss for two years, always on alert, you know, whether you have to go out, oh, no, did I forget my mask or nervous about this or nervous about that. I mean, we've had two years of it and people's bodies are really starting to uh, show the effect of that in you know, outside other stresses and strains because we're really not meant to live in that um, state of alertness for such a long time, you know, and it pushes our adrenaline and our adrenals get exhausted. And, you know, it, it's it, of course, it's different for everybody. However, this is just a common theme I've seen with, you know, many, many people that I work with and just watching, you know, watching the public eye. You can you could see it there, too. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that's what you and I started talking about. It's like, you know, there are things that will regularly be emotional, but you know, it's it's been so much people are trying to, like, even just, like, repress it and push it down. And this isn't even, a, well, it can be astrology, but a lot of it is, is the energies and the vibrations and, and how things are moving quicker, how we're energetically processing things quicker. Mm-hmm. And the body has a, the body needs to figure out how to do that and the way that we can do it and the psyche as well. Um just from what I've seen and how I'm working with the clients that I have, it's important that that we allow the feelings that we're having, and that's where you know making that space for how we're feeling to really um, to really honor that. You know, the sun just yesterday shifted out of Scorpio into Sagittarius, and the Scorpio time of year is is an intense time of year for people who aren't Scorpios because it's. Uh, it's very deep. It's water. It's fixed water, and it it brings things from the depths up to the surface, so we can process. And um, because that's kind of where we started with this conversation last week, and yeah, you know, the emotions of it. It's it's quite intense. Quite intense. It is. And, it is. Um, and and this is the time of year too, when when typically. Um, people get together with family for, for, you know, the holidays and that can just kind yeah. of, um, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's interesting because yeah. I do, I do, you know, weekly forecasts for my, for my Patreon group. However, um, I just did another, I just did a one for YouTube. I only posted it a few hours ago. So I have a YouTube channel, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer, and you can go check it out. It's exactly that, Laura, because the moon has right now, I know, I know, you know, we're recording something that this can be we can we can listen we can use this energy and this information at any year at any holiday however (laughs) this week the moon right now is actually in the sign of cancer and when it's it's in that sign once a month and when it's in a water sign if you astrologers or amateur astrologers or or hobby astrologers love to watch the moon watch when it's in a water sign which is cancer scorpio or pisces emotions run high because people are really feeling it just comes to the surface and the moon is encouraging that. And the moon in the sign of cancer today, the day we're recording this, um, is is all about uh, home and family. Am I being nurtured the way I want to be nurtured? Am I taking care of others? Am I forgetting to take care of my own emotions? Mm. What is the boundaries around that? And as the moon does move through, the sign of cancer over the next two days, and it will be there. Um, uh, what day do we? <laughs> today, let me grab my calendar. It will be there today, which is Monday, November 22nd. It will be also there uh, Tuesday, and then um, even into part of Wednesday. It's in the sign of cancer, so that is emotional, and it's connecting with its planets that are still in Scorpio, so that adds to emotion. And then it connects to Neptune and Pisces, more emotion. 
So we're all we're, we're feeling we're feeling very sensitive and very raw, and the holidays are just beginning, and um, you know every year that is a very delicate subject for many people. Either they have lost, there's been a lot of loss this last couple of years, so there's many many people missing, um, and then there's just the usual dynamics of how you're obligated or feel obligated to go and do stuff with family, but however, you're like, I really don't want to. So how are we going to figure out what those boundaries are? So I want you to make some space for yourself. I want you to ask yourself those questions. How does that feel? You know, maybe you can just say, you know, really need to pass this week (laughs) and just not... Or whatever is your your life circumstance, so, you know, right. it varies right. for everybody. And, um, yeah, and it's yeah. it's that's one thing. I was having a conversation with a friend this morning about this, and um, you know, just how for a lot of people, um, especially with the pandemic, it it gave people a chance to step back and experience you know n- uh, normal holidays um, in a different way, and then they yeah. recognizing that you know, the way we've been doing this, it maybe isn't the healthiest way or isn't, you know, the best for everybody. Um, you know, it's not that people don't want to see their family, but but it gave right. people a chance to experience what, what a holiday could be, you know, without all the extra stuff, you know, the extra um, mm-hmm. drama or the um, the over-the-top gifting and and just making it more simple and, and it's sort of re- reevaluating what is it that yeah. what it is they really want but what people are having trouble with i'm finding is making that space for that and being okay with telling people you know what i'm going to bow out of of the way it's been we've been doing it all along and yeah um that not always not always easy that's a tough conversation because some people might take it personally but mm-hmm. um it just it's indicative of of the whole thing that's happening not just with the holidays and family and everything but everything and so Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are yeah, very yeah. emotionally raw right now. And so, like yeah. you said, to be very gentle with yourself and recognize that, um, that you know, you're going through a lot, processing a lot. And I know some people have actually beaten themselves up over over why, why can't I feel like I'm functioning like I used to? Or why do I feel so triggered by things that I wasn't triggered by before? And so it is, like, like you said, we got to be, be able to step back and yes. evaluate what is right for you emotionally and and mentally and yeah. um and start taking those steps there um, is yeah because yeah. there's some there's some you know some deeper things that are going on you know the moon moves so quickly and that and that's fine because it's just the it's the hourly and the daily um activations or triggers for people however there are much there are other things in, in the astrology that are much deeper going on and um, it is, a lot of it does, is based off of what is it that we value now? Right. What is it that we value now? How can I um, process, you know, what, what I'm doing now? Like, I've been seeing a few titles recently, too, about the Great Resignation. And yeah. um, <laughs> just on, it's like, we got to call everything something, right? We always, something very sensationalized. However, this is really, really, I've been reading a few articles and listening to people, and it's quite, it's quite significant on how people are actually um, really learning how. This gave a lot of people opportunities to figure out how that they can value themselves no, more and not just do what is considered status quo. You know, exactly. Yes. In many different ways, in many different ways, and and looking for ways to uh, approach it, even though we're uncomfortable with it. This is new territory, you know, for everybody that's living on the planet right now. This is new territory for every single one of us, and and it would um, the astrology to me is always the outer planets, but the astrology meaning um, like Uranus, he is about getting us very much out of our comfort zones because we couldn't keep going the way we were and we're not sure what the direction is yet because it's still a flurry of of things you know Mm -hmm. so a lot you know very little has has uh, feels settled yet because there's a lot of discord still in the world Mm -hmm. and we can feel it within ourselves because you know we we should change with the times as well so 
again, bringing it back to the individual, what is it, how can you take, you know, just that extra time for you? Or, and it's always an issue. I've always, especially because I work mainly with women, and women just, you know, and men too are, but, are, are doers, but I just know lots of moms, and there's just, there's rarely time for themselves. And, um, and it's just important that we, we find that and yeah. it, be okay with how we're feeling. Mm-hmm. Be okay that if, you know, every time you go to the bathroom to, you know, you look in the mirror and you cry, you know, I mean, not for months, because then I would recommend some assistance, some medical assistance. But, you know, once in a while, you know, you have a day where you, you just, you're like, oh, my goodness, you know, it just so it's important to let these emotions out. I had a client recently that had that. She was like, oh, my gosh, for a whole month, every time I looked in the mirror, all I could do was cry because mm. something important in family was coming up. And um, it's like, good, 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 good. I'm glad. And, you know, and so this is, this is how we, well, these are examples, but this is important that we find that space for ourselves. Absolutely. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. To breathe. Mm-hmm. And being okay with that and not beating yourself up over it, you know? And, That's um, the biggest thing. It really we have to, is. Yeah, we have to give ourselves permission to be, to give ourselves that space. And, and yeah, we just do. We have to give ourselves that permission. It's so important. Right. Yeah. And, and I have a client as well who's, um, you know, thinking about transitioning careers and they've been in a previous, in a previous uh, career for de- uh, decades at this point. And so they're really pulled towards something else, but they don't, they don't have time to investigate the next step. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's in, so they, they are literally having to, cause every time they want to, they find there's something else they need to do. So they're literally having to carve out like a whole day just to investigate the next um, the next career they want to step into, um, yeah. And and what that takes for a lot of people is you know some people say well, I don't have the time, um, but what if what if this this new career doesn't take off? Um, what if by mm-hmm. taking that time off to investigate my current career suffers? You know, there's all that they go into fear mode. But yeah. But the thing is when 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 it comes right down to it, like what's worse is it you know, continuing to, to climb on the hamster wheel every day or yeah. <laughs> taking the step back to, mm-hmm. to really give, create that space for something else to emerge, something else, sort of awareness of something more, something different, um, mm-hmm. the, you know, and some people may, might even not even know what that is that they're searching for, but because they're so busy, they, there's no place for that to sort of make, you know, get their awareness or catch their awareness in any way. Mm-hmm. And so, that's why it's always yeah. good to step back and and um, take take a, a mental health day and just yeah. don't respond to emails or give yourself a few hours not to respond to emails or phone calls and just unplug. And um, it's yeah. important. It, it really is. I mean, we have we have to. It's, well, I guess you don't have to do anything. However, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. And, and, and honestly, you know, now that I just said that, just kind of came out of my mouth from nowhere. It's true because you know, even if you are, even that is like going to be a vicious circle if you're not careful. That yeah. it's like, oh, I know I need to find time so I can do this thing that I really want, and I can't. So now I'm mad because I can't find the time to find the time to do the thing that. I, and it's like, oh my goodness, it does. It gets. It gets. It gets silly. And it it's really tough. It's so tough on the body. So tough on the body. And in it, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, we really do. We yeah, really do. And it, it does do. come down to, you know, the, to get deeper with that um, is, you know, what is it that is is um, is triggering that 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 um, guilt about taking the time off? Like that's where like some yeah. of this work needs to happen. You know, why? Mm-hmm. Why do you feel guilty? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, that's another thing to explore is like. And, yeah. Uh, I know. I, if you ask me that, I could tell you. <laughs> oh, really? What would that be? Do you mind sharing? <laughs> well, in my no, I don't mind sharing. In you know, in my life, I mean, I've been self-employed as an astrologer full time for only nine years, because up until then, you know, no matter what, I was still like, well, everybody says I can't. You can't earn a living doing this. You can't support yourself doing this. And I mean, really support myself. I don't have a spouse, so 
<laughs> and it's just like, you know, all of those things. And But then you hear uh, family patterns. And this is one of the biggest things is family patterns because, you know, depending on how you were raised. And, you know, I had a really um, very strong grandmother that lived and supported us through our lives. And, and you worked you worked your, from sun up to sundown. You never took a day off. You even when you were sick, you just you still push through, and you learn that work work ethic. I don't know if all my siblings learned it, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one that does this kind of thing. Um, anyways, so it it took me years. I mean, decades, a couple decades to get to the point where because I pra- I've been practicing astrology since 1988, but again just dabbling and part-time and part-time and and because it, it wasn't like an official career, you know. Mm-hmm. How would I, you know, do all of these things? I can't support myself. It's just all of those false beliefs. Yeah. And, you know, then to find the time to just make some space and some wiggle room so just something beautiful can come in. Um, yes. You know, find that time. You know what may be really nice for some people? This is just coming true. Because, you know, I mean, astrology is very analytical, and I know people love to love to learn about their own charts, but if you really want to find a way just to create a little bit of space, um, a nice oracle deck, and not to roll, because that makes people nervous sometimes, but I mean, if you really are brand new and are trying to figure out how to create some space, um, I, I would recommend an oracle deck of some kind, something that just feels okay and not too woo-woo, right? Mm -hmm. That's usually the first step if you want to step into like the metaphysical thing, just my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then I also recommend that people find a way to be creative. You know, what? how are you creative? And that doesn't mean you're picking up a paintbrush. We always have to clarify that. (laughs) Being creative is many things. And those are the qualities of um, the water qualities. Mm-hmm. So in this, yeah. in your astrology, so how you uh, can allow things to flow. Yes. And again, if things are so tight, you can't. Things won't flow. Mm-hmm. So again, finding time. Take an extra five minutes in the shower. Again, turn on water. Get a water little water feature in your house or a water the sound anything anything that can help you just to rec- recognize that um, there's a flow in your life. And again, mm-hmm. the oracle decks are wonderful too because they, they help you to learn how to, how to just listen and create mm-hmm. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that doesn't like tr- take you into something else, you know, that you have to do. <laughs> anything that helps you to unplug a little bit and it might even be helpful too i mean i know sometimes people i, I say this a lot like oh maybe you should journal right um mm-hmm. a lot of times things arise from your intuition as you journal and put things down in in words um but some people aren't comfortable with writing their thoughts down um so oh. if if you're not um you know like like you said maybe creating something uh through art or a project or something or you could even speak what you're feeling and then just and then just um, delete it. And that way you don't feel like, oh no, my words are out there. Um, so anything to kind of get your thoughts out is a really great thing. Because once you start speaking and 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 expressing yourself that way, and putting things into words in some way, shape or form, you'll be surprised what comes out of your mouth. And you go, wait a second, yeah. I just answered my own question. Um, mm-hmm. So so that's that's another process too. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and and. Even, and there are times like, um, <clears throat> again, this is kind of a heavy astrology, but not heavy. Um, people who like to work with uh, the lunar f- cycles, the, the lunar phases, um, mm-hmm. mostly people work with the new moon and the full moon. And I recommend people at the, full, at the new moon um, to, you don't necessarily have to, you know, write out goals and intentions at the new moon, but it's, if, if that doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't make sense, but write out how you're feeling because at the new moon, and everybody can tell when the new moon is. It's a calendar everywhere that should have it on it. Just, um, it, it, it's, the moon is dark, and that's where we can, you know, spend a few minutes, light a candle, and just write down how am I feeling right now, how am I feeling this month. Mm-hmm. And again, that's just another very simple way to get into 
the process of listening <clears throat> and creating some space for yourself, you know? And uh, that's one of the other things that I recommend that people do. If they can, and if they can't, they can't, and that's okay too. And yeah. I think that's going to be probably the biggest thing that, you know, no matter what Laura and I are saying, if it's not feasible for you to be able to, if you can't do any of these things, then um, please don't beat yourself up about it because that exactly. would be yeah. kind of and what, what, what I will tell a lot of people in my classes that come in, and they might be, you know, a more of an intermediate class, but then I have new people who come in who are brand new to the subject, whatever it might be, I might be teaching, and I'll say to them, I'll say, you know, some of this may it may not apply to your life right now, like none of it may apply to your life, but I guarantee you something's going to stick, and then when the time is right for you to implement whatever it is that I'm teaching, it will come back, and it will be like, yeah. okay, now that's time to start doing this. So um, just, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't resonate with you right now, tuck it away in the back of your brain. <laughs> and when the time yeah. comes, it will it will feel right to do one of these things. Um, you'll, you'll find it's a tool that you can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Very good. Yes. So we're coming up on the break, and I do see we do have some callers on the line, and we will be getting to you just after the break. But if you'd like to call, with, call in with a question or if you'd like a reading, just call us at 816 251 Three five five five. And again, if you're looking for a reading, we just need your birth date, your birth time, and your city of birth. And um, and we're open for questions or readings. But we do have a few callers on the line, and we'll be back in just a few moments. And while we're on the break, if you'd like, you can go to Dorothy's website and check out what she has to offer. And that's nhastrologer.com. We'll see you in just a few moments. All are welcome. We're glad you found us. Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Welcome back to The Intuitive Life with Laura Wooster. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Laura Wooster, and I'm here with my dear friend and colleague, Dorothy Morgan, astrologer. And so um, we are going to go to the calls in just a moment. And if you'd like to get in the queue again, it's 816-251-3555. Um, but first of all, um, let's go to um, let's see, let's go to Jane. Hello, Jane. Hi. Thank Hi. you for taking Hi. my call. Oh, thanks You're for welcome. calling. Oh, good energy. <laughs> I know, very, very exuberant. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, how can we help uh, you today? Do you have something in on your mind? Well, um, actually, uh, I'm also calling with a career-related question and um, ready to make a shift. I completed a graduate certificate program and um, but it seems that I'm just having trouble stepping into the next position I've had some great interviews um, mm -hmm. it's not coming together and All right. I'm a little bit mystified okay I, I well Jane you are in what we call the Saturn return you have been working through that for about the last four or five months. And what that represents, Saturn represents our career, and where it happens to be located in your astrology chart is in the area of education, all right? And it's just starting to um, uh, release, if you will, meaning you've done all the work you're meant to be doing, and now it's you will get the position that you've worked towards. So there is no reason that you wouldn't get what you have put into this because if you've got degrees and certificates and things such as that, I think what we need to do here um, is allow some things 
just to um, don't push so hard in a sense. Um, great do the interviews and then just release the results um, and just allow that to uh, flow because sometimes when we so we have so much Saturn going on that just means it's like we're, we're we have we've been working so hard towards a goal then once we get there we don't know what to do with it it's like so enjoy the moment in a way, if you've been listening to the first half hour, what we were saying is just like, you know, be in the moment, give yourself some space to breathe, understand that this is just a process, and there's a lot of activity um, in your career sector. So I am certain that over the next few weeks um, that you will find something or something will be presented to you um, that is perfect for you, I mean, just right for you. And um, there's just a lot of, uh, yeah, bef even before the end of the year. So do you have, is, has somebody offered you anything yet? Or you said you're just waiting? Yeah, um, I have had a couple of offers, um, but they um, didn't match with my availability, if you will. Okay. Um, and I'm also trying to figure out if I'm, I'm in a full-time job right now. I'm looking for part-time work in the new career field, and that's why I was intrigued by the topic of the show, because I don't yeah. know if it's time to completely let go of my current position. Yeah. But yeah, it's just that's a, to say yeah. it resonates, because I, I work in education, and, that's, yeah. uh, and everything you say resonates. Thank you. You're welcome. The well, the astrology shows. I'm just advancing the chart while you're talking. The astrology shows that, um, in regard to to your career, um, there can be there there can be a shift here in February. Um, but you know, I mean, knowing school, I mean, that's just a very, my logical brain is like, well, if you're in education, school's going to be done May or June, however. So you know, do what you want. But January is usually a midterm shift too. So to me, I believe that's um, what it looks like uh, in your astrology that you will look for a shift, and that's that midterm shift. So midterm, what, January break usually or February break? Somewhere in there, um, it looks like there is something that will be um, shifting for you in, in regard to your career. And But again, I think it's going to be really important for you to um, – do your best to get out of the analytical mind and just feel into it. <laughs> like, when do I feel like this is about right? You have a beautiful Jupiter return at the same time, which will be February, mid-February, and that's also in your career sector. So it just looks to me like there's something here in February that is is um, a turning point or a shifting point for you and whatever it happens to be for you. I can't actually even tell exactly what it is, but it is related to how you are out in the world and the education you have received um, recently um, and presenting yourself out in the world because there's a, you have a lot of um, benefit with the transits that are happening right now at the top of your chart. So you're, uh, you're going to be in a lot of people's eye. So yeah. that's uh, this is great. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, I was looking. I was pulling cards while I was um, go along here, and I'm and I love that you said you have to get off the analytical mind here because there's not a straight and narrow road between these two jobs. Um, there's there's sort of a um, you know small doors opening up along the way between <laughs> between these two, but there's not so the fun. usual you know. Um, not the usual um, res you know, resigning from one job and going to the next one, right? So there is sort of like opportunities to sort of try on jobs perhaps or um, possibly even multiple positions at some point, but not all at once. It, it, so it's not, it may not be the, the, the straight and narrow road, but there are many opportunities. So, um, yeah. so you kind of have to think outside the box a little bit with this to kind of give give this um, give people a chance to get to know what what it is that you have to offer and I'm giggling I'm giggling I'm sure you yeah. can hear me because you're saying you're saying you, you need to like step out of the box and it's not a straight line well her 
Jane, your Midheaven, your Saturn, all that is Aquarius. And if anybody knows the symbol for Aquarius, it's a zigzag line. <laughs> <laughs> and Aquarius is, we got to do something different. We're going to be different. We're going to be unique. Um, I want, you know, I, I don't want to do, even though I may have done the straight and narrow at this point in time, um, just like we mentioned earlier, you know, this pandemic has taught a lot of people that it's like, oh, I don't want to do this, this anymore. And I know there's a lot of teachers and medical professionals that are retiring or finding new careers because it's just, they're, they're just done. They're done too much, too much. And so that's, so anyways, it's not a straight line. It's a wavy line. <laughs> that was good. That's you always awesome. like that, Laura. You've always done that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know astrology, but I feel the energy of it. But um, yes, so hopefully that, hopefully that helps, Jane. Um, it helps to sort of know that, that you're on the right track. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's tremendously helpful. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. You're Wonderful. welcome. Wonderful. Thank All right. You. Thanks, Jane. Thanks for calling in. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's see. We've got several more callers. Let's just see how many people we can get through as quickly as possible. I want to make sure we connect okay. with everybody. Um, let's go to Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Hey! Hey! Everybody's so excited to this is awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hi, Kyle. Because I saw your topic, and it's something that's been like kind of like weighing on me lately about like letting go. Yes. Yeah. So I um I have like a situation that um I've actually called about this before. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, so like, I tried to like cut someone out of my life and like, um, I'm trying to be very zen about it and like no ill will. I just don't mm -hmm. want this person in my life, but I guess I have like, um, I guess there must be some kind of like guilt going on or something. Cause I keep like pulling cards that are like forgiveness. And every time I get like a reading forgiveness comes up and, um, it's just, it, I keep getting these, like, le these cards and, like, these syn synchronicities of forgiveness. And I feel like I have because I don't wish this person ill will, but I don't want them in my life. So what do you do when you're, like, trying to let go, but then you keep kind of getting these things that keep coming back into your life? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. Do you, do you feel does. guilty for, for setting those boundaries with them? I think I might. I think there might yeah. be some guilt going on. And I yeah. shouldn't. Like, I have no obligation. Like, I don't have, I don't owe this person anything. Right. Yeah, so this is forgiveness yeah. for yourself for drawing boundaries uh, where you feel they're necessary. Exactly. Yeah. What I thought too. yeah. It's for yourself. It, it's not that you don't need to forgive the other person anymore because it sounds like you've you've been okay with that. So, yeah, that's exactly what I was picking up, too, not even looking at the astrology. <laughs> However, Neptune squares Neptune in your astrology chart right now, which can, which can blur the lines of, um, of boundaries. But it's also, Neptune is also about, you know, forgiveness and understanding and compassion. So I want you to turn it in on yourself. You know? Okay. If you, yeah, if you feel you've already done a decent job of, you know, doing that for the other person in your life, then, um, yeah, just like Laura said, too, it's like, yeah, do it, turn it back in for you. So I think that's going to be um, more helpful. And, you know, astrology here, we have um, your chart is very similar at the setup with the other person he just called. And Saturn is coming to your midheaven. And so when we have Saturn there, when we're talking about relationships, um, then uh, that helps us to separate from the other person um, if that is what's happening in your life at this time. And it is. Mm -hmm. You even have Venus. You even have Venus at, the, at that point. So Saturn is connecting to your Venus now, too. And that really peaks in mid-February. So it doesn't mean that you're going to wait till February to really feel the, the separation and you know, that you've moved on and so is the other person. However, um, that is an, a, a, it is a, a critical point when Saturn transit connects with our Venus because we, um, we, we are e it's easy for us to release what is no longer working in regard to the relationship, okay, whatever mm -hmm. that relationship is. So, um, yeah, keep, keep, keep those boundaries. 
up Neptune square Neptune and Saturn conjunct Venus. So you, you can do that. that. I think that would be the best thing for you to um, to do that and stop picking cards about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, there's That's a daily card. I'm like, what, what do I I'll need to know fun. for today? What's in store for me today? And it's always like, who do you okay. need to give for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not even asking about it. I'm trying not even to think right. about this person. <laughs> Very good. That's awesome. I know I sound oh like God. mom there. <laughs> I did all my daily readings, or I did like a four 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 reading with um, with Karen Polino Career, and like I picked the yeah. the number, two and it was all about forgiveness. And I'm like, oh. Uh, <laughs> so it might be for you. It might be for you. Yeah, okay. for yourself. But also too was yeah. was I'm just putting this out there um, as well. Um, so was there something that you actually did enjoy about this connection though? before you decided to have um, you know. not really i've called about okay. it before it's like my biological dad that i just found out about like at age 41 i mean it was okay we were just like chatting but he just came on really strong and he lied about some stuff he tries to make my mom look out oh, to be like yes. this villain who like hid me from him mm, when that's not yeah. what happened like she told like she went to tell him she was pregnant and like they sent her away you know, and like, do whatever you want to do, lady. We don't care. And now he's trying to be like, oh, I knew about you and I always loved you. And I'm like, Wah, whatever, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're feeling, so you're feeling it's a bit toxic and you want to put some, some yeah. healthy balance. Yeah, I, I'm good. My dad is my dad. I don't need this dude. I found out my medical history, but he like wants like this, like father daughter relationship. And I'm like, no, I'm all set. Yeah. Especially when you like, yeah. don't lie about my mom. Like my mom's my best friend and yeah. no. Yeah. I, that's, I don't play that game. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, so it might be a little bit for, I mean, I feel, it, it feels like it's more about you maybe just closing that door a little bit. That's all. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, yeah. I thought but, I did. Yeah. Oh, my, I didn't want to talk to him. I was like, I need time and space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and Saturn, heard from with Saturn, Saturn, with the Saturn transits too, Saturn, um, rep, all of the planets represent multiple things and Saturn represents, um, um, authority figures or, or parental father, if you will, but it's also karma and boundaries. And so um, these are, if we just use those keywords right there, so it's putting up the boundaries um, mm -hmm. around, you know, who he is. So even, even, even whatever karma happens to be there, if you are choosing that, no, we don't, we're not going across that line. We're going to just leave this the way it is. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Okay. I will work on that. And I, I promise I won't ask. I'm not asking about him. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, just, oh, I keep you. getting this recurring theme, and I'm like, what is my soul mm -hmm. trying to tell me? Why does this keep yeah. coming up? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that interesting when that keeps coming up? Same card over and over. I'd I'd give the oracle cards a break for just a, you know a few days maybe, and just say, okay, you guys go reset, and then I'll come back to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. I would too. I would yeah. too. Alrighty. Well, All hopefully right. that helps, Thank Kyle. It does. Thank you. I'm going to work on myself. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thanks for you. you too. Right. Thanks for calling. Right. Bye, Kyle. <laughs> All right. Oh, goodness. Okay. So I've got a couple more. Well, we got plenty of time to get to the next uh, few callers. So let's go. I think okay. I um, sent you their information already. I have that, yes. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let's go to Kim. Hi, Kim. Hello, Kim. Kim. Hello. Hi. Hi, Kim. Hi. Hey, thanks for taking. Hi, thanks for taking my call. I um, we spoke briefly last week. Um, I uh, joined your YouTube channel. Thank you. Oh, um, that's right. So Hi. Enjoy, that's right. I thought this was familiar. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy, enjoying that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was kind of affected by that uh, eclipse, and um, well, I guess, you know, I just was wondering about this ongoing situation that I have with my family, my dad and my brother, you know, this situation is becoming legal now, and um, um, I know we talked last week briefly about resolution, um, uh, mm -hmm. You know, my dad, my brother basically took my dad and put him in this facility, and now I'm trying to challenge his power of attorney because I don't, I, I yeah. don't believe it's valid. Um, so it's, it's really, um, you know, he's blocking yeah. me from seeing my father. It's, it's a real, it's a really, really, really 
stressful situation. And my dad, you know, mm-hmm. his, his mental state is just getting worse because of this. And right. I'm not allowed to see him. And it's it's a big mess. Yeah, and I can see, I mean, there is a, a sector of the astrology that is about legal um, legal in, in engagement, if you will. Um, so mm-hmm. if you are, if you are thinking of doing that, then yeah, I recommend that, um, that looks like that is, um, that's active. You know, I could see there's just mm. movement in the area that is about, um, when we're in legal litigation, if you will, for, for I don't know the legal words, but in, in court or in, in a legal, uh, back and forth with somebody, um, that's mm-hmm. that starts right now it's that's jupiter moving into your seventh house that starts right now and um mm-hmm. it's going to stay in play um things like this don't resolve quickly yeah. so mm-hmm. um it's important for you to be um of course you those emotions are going to come to the surface but when it comes to the mm-hmm. legal piece you're going to want to just do your best to stick with facts um and because that will get you the furthest again on your emotions mm-hmm. and how you're feeling but and and mm-hmm. and definitely get some legal assistance um and i could again i could see that and i can also see that right now you as well like i think we mentioned this last time um you are in your saturn return when it comes to this spring so the winter spring and what that represents is additional responsibilities and so it could very well be that there is more responsibilities in that situation for you and it sounds like that's something that you you want you you want to connect you want to have more responsibility and more connection Mm -hmm. so i do see that there Mm -hmm. so that is something that you know is you know just real um right here in our face so And I'm kind of seeing the same thing with, um, you know, the wheels turning slowly with this, um, but it's, it's good that you're you're at least addressing it, but it's going to take some time. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing around this as well is like hidden information. So either mm. either there is um, there whoever um, the people who run the facility or took your father in wasn't given the full picture in some way mm. or mm-hmm. or or there's going to be. Um, as your father spends more time and being cared for in this facility, that the information that the caretakers gain from working with your dad will help you as well. So there's this, mm, this hidden okay. information that will start to rise to the surface. So I totally agree with what what, what Dorothy said about um, sticking with the truth and just trusting that that will be what prevails at you know, as time goes on. Uh, but again, I do see the wheels turning slowly, but I do see progress as well. So, um, so patience is key here and just, um, mm-hmm. and giving in plenty of self care for you and stepping back and, um, when you need to, and just, um, not getting too, um, it's hard not to get emotionally involved with this because it's your dad. Right. And this is, this is what, is, right. and, uh, you want to make sure you have the connection with him. Um, but there's something here about making sure at times when it feels like it's getting chaotic or out of control to step back and take a breath. Um, because it, if there's, there's a sense of, um, sense of possibly, um, some anxiety ramping up around you about this, which I can understand why, um, completely understand mm-hmm. why, because it feels a lot of it's out of, your, out of your control at this moment. But so it's just mm-hmm. going to be more important to be able to take a step back um, and, and breathe when that when that comes up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've been in, I've been taking that. But today's that day off. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> the good. Day. Yeah. Yes. Today's nice. the because uh, I, I was like, that. okay. Very maxed out. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, so good for you yeah. for, for yeah. taking the time to do that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank so you. So hopefully the, thank you I hope this helps. Show. Yeah, welcome. thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. welcome. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's see. we got a couple more minutes. I think we can get one more caller in. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of Saturn return people, like either just after their Saturn return or going into their Saturn return. <laughs> All right, um, the first two ladies have, have the first two the first two ladies have also had uh, Gemini rising, and uh-huh. the next two, uh, the lady that will be coming on, have, both have Leo rising. So they're uh-huh. so that that represents that you know as pairs they're coming in uh, with similar 
overall transits. It's just like fascinating placing. how that yeah, it is. is awesome. <laughs> so let's go, let's go to Pauline. We have about three minutes left. So let's see what we can All do. Right. Hello, Pauline. Hi. I thought I just disconnected. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, yeah, I'm the Leo no. rising. So I'm just curious. Um, I was just wondering yeah. about the Venus retrograde that's coming up. I think my Venus is somehow going to be impacted, but I'm not sure. I'm a Venus in Capricorn. I think, oh, this is the Dario. I don't know what I am. <laughs> I will tell you. Actually, honey, actually your, your Venus is in Aquarius, and that means in the next two weeks, let me let me get the time frame. But so for the, in in between now and December, Saturn will be connecting with your Venus. Venus retrogrades oh. in a different place. I can talk about that in a second. Um, so Saturn conjunct Venus in the sixth house. Typically, that means that we need we're reassessing our job, not what you know, not your career, but the job or what you do day in and day out. And mm -hmm. it also. It, so if you have a job, it, it's that. Uh, it can be co-workers if you have a job, but it can also be you, uh, I want you to pay attention to how, your health and your wellness. It, it's not oh, saying... Oh, yeah, I've been sick. working on that. I was a healer it's, before, and that's what I've been working on these last... Mm -hmm. I've been on hiatus, and I, I'm supposed to come back out once I'm really ready, when I don't take on oh, all the stuff anymore. Perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what I would want you to do, because Saturn, again, is about boundaries. And so if, if you've been, you know, lacking in those in, in your own physical health, then this is about that. So it's also about setting up routines in your, uh, in your daily, you know, daily routine. So, you know, like, you know, every three days you'll go walk a mile, whatever, whatever it is. Right, um, right, so yeah. That's my, yeah, that's what I've been focusing on, me have my health totally before I ever come out again, if I ever even do anything. It's helping people. <laughs> Connect to their own healing, and that's it. I'm not doing any healing work. Exactly. I'm not touching anybody. I'm not being empathic anymore. And that includes yeah. relationships, because that's another boundary, like the other women we just talk about. That is why yeah. I wanted to know about Venus, because I, I think I have my uh -huh. first flame, and he's exactly, he mirrors me. We have the same Leo rising. We've got everything, even the life paths are the same. <laughs> oh, wonderful, I, wonderful. You... It, but it's not good. He's actually going to hell, and he's like, he, instead of noticing the mirror in each of us, mm -hmm. he's actually pushing me away rather than looking at what he needs oh. to look at. Well, That's I think Laura and I, go to, Laura and I are going to have another conversation about Venus retrograde in a few weeks. Great, great. However, I, love, just, I didn't realize yeah. you've been on the show before. I'm going to go back and listen to all your shows. You're really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's more. But Laura, do you have anything to say? <laughs> Um, no, I'm just, I'm, the only thing I'm, I'm getting from you, Pauline, as soon as you, as soon as you got on the air, I just felt like this, wow, you're stepping into a very powerful place, right, in your life. So I just, there's a very powerful energy coming from you. So that's wonderful. I think that's great. Own it. Okay. Um, but the thing is, too, is, is recognizing when it's almost, I think sometimes the, and I don't want, and, and I'm, I might, I don't want to get any grief for this, but I'm not telling you to turn that down at all. That's not where I'm going with this. But just recognizing that sometimes you may be too powerful for some people in your life and that yes. that's okay. Yes. That's their problem. Okay. Right. But just recognizing if, if there is something that comes up around that, be like, you know what? Exactly. I think you know I'm intimidated by my light. I actually Yay. have been chastised okay. by this man and I'm really <laughs> upset. Because right. I can't well, believe that I've surpassed I mean, him. And I don't really want to yeah. be in my in oh. my ego, but I really yeah. know my power now. So, <laughs> sorry, on. I thank can't handle okay. any men who go that way. We're going into the we're going into the end of the show. But thank you so much, Pauline. Thanks for calling. <laughs> thank you, Pauline. <laughs> All right, you take care. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. It's always a pleasure working with you. I love working with Thank you. Thank you. I love being here. Thank you. We will see you all next week. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody, in your, if you're in the States. Take care. Thank you for listening to Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Unity started more than a century ago as a publishing house, and it's still producing some of the finest books and spiritual products anywhere. Here's good news. This holiday season, everything in the Unity online store is 15% off. You'll find the latest books, journals, and card decks, along with a now-famous intention dice and a new pet puzzle. This year, send unique gifts to all your spiritual friends. 
visit unity.org slash gift guide.